Gas prices got you down? Maybe it's time for an electric vehicle. Jared here with CarBuzz.com and with fuel prices skyrocketing, a lot of you out there are probably considering buying your first electric vehicle. That's why I've borrowed this 2022 Polestar 2 to show you what it's like to live with an EV. I'm conducting my test here in Orlando and I'm gonna try to dispel some of the myths about buying and owning an electric vehicle and show you what it's like. Before we start talking about what it's like to own an electric vehicle, I wanna briefly mention the car I will be using for this test because it might be one that you're unfamiliar with. This is the 2022 Polestar 2. It comes from a new company called Polestar that you might not be that familiar with. No, it's not the name of an exotic dance club. It is a spin-off brand from Volvo. You might remember that Volvo built a bunch of sporty models like the V60 and S60 Polestar that were kind of like BMW M cars or Mercedes AMG cars. Now, Polestar is an all-electric brand, but oddly enough, they didn't start that way. Their first model was this gorgeous, sexy coupe called the Polestar 1, and it was a plug-in hybrid, so it had a four-cylinder engine, a lot of electric motors, over 600 horsepower. It was a gorgeous looking thing. The Polestar 2, this car is very different. This is their second model, hence the 2. They call it a four-door fastback. That means we have a massive hatchback there at the back. We do have a small frunk up here as well. And as you might be able to tell, this has a little bit more ground clearance than you're probably used to seeing on a sedan. So it's kind of like a cross between a sedan and an SUV. There's really nothing else like this on the road. Now let's talk about what kind of specs you get in this Polestar 2 and what kind of specs you're going to need to learn when shopping for an EV because the terminology is very different than when you're buying a normal internal combustion engine car. The first term you're going to want to know is battery pack size, which is measured in kilowatt hours. So this is similar to how big your gas tank is, how many gallons it'll hold. This is how much electricity the battery will hold. And it's way more important than knowing how big your gas tank is because whereas you can fill up your fuel in under five minutes, charging takes significantly longer. So the bigger the battery, theoretically, the further you could go on a charge. This particular car, the Polestar 2, has a 78 kilowatt hour battery. And just to give you a comparison, a car of similar size, the Tesla Model 3, has an 82 kilowatt hour pack. So there's only one battery size, so it's not like in a car where you can either get like a four cylinder or a more powerful V6. The way that you add power in an EV isn't necessarily to go with a larger battery. It's to add electric motors. So for example, the Polestar 2, you can get as a single motor. They put it at the front, producing 231 horsepower but we have the dual motor version. So it costs $4,000 extra and you get a second electric motor at the back. So not only are you getting all wheel drive for that upgrade, but you're getting significantly more power. It goes from 231 to 408 horsepower. Now that's going to have some huge implications for your acceleration times. So while the front motor version of this car takes around seven seconds to hit 60 miles an hour, this dual motor version can do it in just four and a half. So when I put my foot down on the throttle hard. Oh boy. <laughs> it's really, really quick. That is certainly worth a $4,000 upgrade. So should you get the dual motor? Well, if you're at all concerned with performance, I say absolutely yes, because this thing feels so rapid. I can just whoosh past people in traffic, no problems at all. But if you're more concerned with how far you'll go on a charge, maybe you should just get the front wheel drive version. That's because since there are two electric motors sapping the juice from the battery, it does drain it a little bit quicker. Polestar says you'll go 270 miles on a charge in that single motor version, whereas this dual motor version will only go 249 miles. So we've learned about kilowatt hours, how big the battery pack is and how far the car can go on a charge. But I think people are overly reliant on that numbers. They just look at range, but equally or even more important is how quickly a car can charge. That's what's known as kilowatts, K-W. So that's different from kilowatt hours. So whereas kilowatt hours measures how big the battery is, kilowatts measures how quickly you can get the energy from the grid into the car. So think of it like filling a swimming pool. You 
You could do it with a little household hose, which would take a very long time for a swimming pool, or you could fill it up with a fire hose, which would fill up that pool much quicker. With an EV, there are three different levels that you need to know in terms of charging. There's level one, level two, and level three, which is also referred to as DC fast charging. I'm gonna show you all three in this video, starting with level one, which is your basic 110 volt outlet that you have anywhere in your house. Now, charging on one of these, you're gonna average about 1.4 kilowatts, which is very low, and very slow. So this is kind of like trickle charging. So charging the Polestar from an empty battery up to full this way would take a whopping 22 hours. Now I know that's a really long time, but if you're not really depleting the battery every day and you're just plugging in this way at home, you can probably get through the week without having to DC fast charge. Now, if you are going much further every day, this solution is not gonna work for you. You're gonna want something faster. To charge at a quicker rate, you're gonna wanna use a level two charger. You can get one of those installed into your house. It requires an additional installation and fee using the same outlet that you would use for your washer or your dryer. Now, unfortunately, I don't have one of those, so I've come to a public level two station that's located in my local park. Now, remember, a level one will charge at about 1.4 kilowatts. This ranges anywhere from six to 20, much quicker. So I can just scan in right here using the little QR code. And this one from Duke Energy, it's from a company called Green Lots happens to be completely free. On a level two charger like this, the Polestar can go from zero to full in just under eight hours. So you come home from work, plug in, and by the time you wake up the next morning, you have a completely full charge. No need to ever go to a gas station. That is convenient. So those level two chargers that I just showed you are not the fastest way to charge up a Polestar. To show you how quickly you can charge one of these, I've plugged in the local Electrify America charging station. The closest one to me is at the Florida Mall. And you can see once I plug this into the Google Maps, it's gonna show me a lot of information. It's gonna show me which chargers are available, how fast they are, how many of each of those is available. And there at the bottom, it's gonna tell me how long, how far, and what battery percentage I'll have when I get there. So we've talked about charging at home, but if you really want to juice up more quickly, you're going to want to do it at one of these public charging stations. Now, the U.S. Department of Energy says that 80% of all EV charging is done in the home, but the other 20%, maybe you live in an apartment that doesn't have a charger like I do, or maybe you're just on the road a lot. So this is going to be an important thing for you. So I've come to the Florida Mall where we have our closest Electrify America station. Like I said, it's about 30 minutes out of my way to come here, but we can charge much quicker on this. And I should note that if you buy or lease a brand new Polestar 2, you are going to get two years of complimentary 30 minute charging sessions completely free included in the price. But Polestar did not set that up for me on my loaner. So I'm going to have to figure out how to pay for this electricity. So let's figure out how to plug in the Polestar here. I'm going to go ahead and open it up because I'm DC fast charging. I'm going to want to pull this little portion of the plug to open it up. Now I have my DC charging capability. So DC is level three. I've already talked to you about le what level one and level two are. So in terms of kilowatts, this is gonna range anywhere from 50 on the low end to 350. And it'll actually tell you like what it is here on the actual charging station. So you can see that this one is up to 150 kilowatts, which is fine. I don't need the full 350 because the Polestar can't actually accept that charging speed, which is the fastest that you can get at an EA station. The Polestar used to charge at 150, which is what I'm about to plug in. They have since put an over the air update on this car that will allow you to charge at 155 kilowatts. Um, so now let's go ahead and see if I can charge it. It says connecting to the vehicle, but I think I'm still going to need to pay for it. So what I've done is I've put my EA Electrify America charge card here on my Apple wallet, and I should just be able to hold it up to here and it should pay. Hold near reader. It just says connecting to vehicle. See, Sometimes there can be an issue with this. Usually like you're all set up with this. I don't own an electric car, so this is a little tricky. Connecting the vehicle. Technical difficulties, people. Okay, now what? Connecting the vehicle. Yes, I see that you're connecting the vehicle. Do I need to open up the EA app maybe? What do I do here? See, in a Tesla, you just plug in and the car handles everything and you just don't have to do anything. You just plug in and just don't even think about it. This is, um, we're gonna figure this out. Connecting the vehicle, yes, I know. Come on, what charger number is this? Oh, that one? So it's three. 
yes, I want the 150. Swipe to start charge. So I did it on the app. It didn't work through my wallet, but it says there was an issue reloading your balance. Ugh, I hate these apps. They're so annoying. Okay, so here's an issue with Electrify America. Unlike Tesla, who bills you for the electricity you use, I believe, Electrify America makes you like pull out chunks of money from your account. So I'm gonna have to like put $10 in even if I don't end up using $10. Okay, so I'm gonna add funds. Let's see, one time reload. I'm gonna add $10 to it from my credit card. It's not working. Oh, come on, come on. All right, so I finally figured it out and involved me putting my credit card in there, which was a little bit annoying, but now it is finally charging and I can talk to you about the charging speeds on this car. So I mentioned it can charge it up to 155 kilowatts, which means that it should get from 10% battery to 80% battery in under 40 minutes, which means I've got 40 minutes to kill. Luckily, I'm at a mall. So while I'm sitting here charging, I should probably let you know that these charge times are getting quicker with each passing year. The Kia EV6 and Hyundai Ioniq 5 just came out with charging speeds of up to 250 kilowatts, so they can go from 10% to 80% charge in under 20 minutes, which is fantastic. But while I'm sitting here, I should show you that there are some really cool things you can do on the Polestar's screen while you wait. Obviously, you can listen to music, you can listen to a podcast. I've downloaded this Vivaldi all the app because we have the Google operating system you can download apps from the Play Store which is really cool so you can load up a full web browser I have it on YouTube right now so I can go ahead and watch one of my own car reviews which is quite nice or I actually found this cool app um, on the screen here so if I come over to car sounds 2021 this is a really cool app I'm not really sure who made this um, but if I come over here to Ford GT40 taking off you can play this while you're driving my camera guy, Austin, loves this feature. And while I'm charging, I think this is a perfect time for me to dispel some of the myths that are associated with electric cars. I see them spreading around social media all the time and people believe this stuff and then they will actively go out of their way to not buy an electric car. So let's talk about the first one, range anxiety. I get a lot of people telling me I need an electric car that goes 500 or 600 miles on a single charge or else I won't buy one. Well, honestly, a lot of gas cars don't even go that far, first of all. Um, but the average commute, and this is the average across the United States, is only around 15 miles each way. So that means this Polestar 2 could do the average commute eight days in a row before needing to charge. And only 11% of Americans drive more than 30 miles each way per day. So 250 miles, the range on this Polestar is plenty for most people. Next myth, EVs aren't better for the environment because my electricity at my house comes from coal. Well, that's false. According to the EPA website, even factoring in for electricity sources where you get your energy from your house, an EV reduces your overall CO2 emissions compared to an internal combustion engine car. And then a lot of people will say, well, what about mining the nickel for the batteries and the production of the EV? Over the life of the car, my gas engine car will still be better. Well, the EPA also says that that is false because A, that assumes you're not buying a new car, so which you probably are. Your current car is probably not going to last you forever. And B, it's still not true because over the course of owning the vehicle, the lack of tailpipes emissions from this electric car will offset you owning your gasoline car. And the final gripe that I've written down that I hear from people all the time is there aren't enough charging stations. As I mentioned earlier, 80% of your charging is going to be done at home anyway. So just think about that. You wake up in the morning to a full charge pretty much every day and you never have to visit a gas station. But if you are going to publicly charge, there are over 113,000 plugs in the US at over 45,000 stations. Now I'll give it to you that this is a little more area dependent. Maybe you live somewhere where there really aren't any EV charges. But here where I live in Orlando, even though this was 30 minutes out of the way, it is properly convenient. I mean, there was a Kia EV6 here and a Nissan Leaf and a Hyundai Ioniq, but they've since left, they're done charging. And now all of these chargers are open to me. Um, so if you have a place to charge at home, owning an EV is much more convenient than owning a gasoline engine car. And if you are worried about that public charging, the federal government just invested $5 
billion dollars to build more of them. So there's only gonna be more EV charging stations in the future, not less. If you're wondering why I drove a half hour out of my way to an Electrify America station today, instead of just using a Tesla supercharger, which is literally right down the road from me, I'm going to explain why. This is some very useful EV tips if you're looking to buy an electric car that's not a Tesla. So obviously Tesla has this massive supercharger network. You can see all of these Teslas charging here. But the problem is, is that the plug they use is completely different. So it will not fit in my Polestar. And even if I had some kind of adapter that would make it work, the Tesla superchargers, at least here in the United States, will not work on any other non-Tesla vehicles. So while if I did have a Tesla, I could have used that EA station today. If with my Polestar, I cannot use Tesla's charger. Now, I thought that Tesla's mission was to get more people to buy EVs. And you'd think if they opened up these superchargers to other EVs, that would allow more people to buy them because then they could charge up at places like this Wawa that we're at, but sadly not. I think Tesla should open up their stations so that other people, like somebody who owns a Polestar, can use them. Let me know what you think in the comments. So that was our little taste of what it's like to live with an electric car here in Orlando, Florida. If that experience seems like something you might enjoy and maybe you want to buy this car, the Polestar 2, here's how much you'll pay. It's $45,900 for the base front motor version, or if you want the dual motor with a lot more power, that's gonna cost another four grand, so just under $50,000. And if you want to load this car up with options, you'll be paying about $68,600. But those prices that I just told you are not the full story. Part of the reason why Polestar became its own brand, especially here in the US, is because this company now gets their own separate federal tax credits from the US government. So when you buy one of these, you're gonna get about $7,500 back from the federal government, assuming that you have that much in your tax liabilities. And then there's a bunch of state and local credits that you can apply. If you're getting the front motor version of this car in a state like California or New Jersey, it could be as cheap as $35,000. Here's why that's so important. Because Tesla has sold so many cars, they are done, completely out of that credit. You can't get it on any Tesla. Whereas Polestar is a very new company, so you will still get it. So I'm not gonna quote any Tesla prices because they're constantly changing, and by the time you watch this video, they will have upped the price 10 times by then, but, Basically, what you need to know is the equivalent Polestar is going to be less expensive than the equivalent Tesla. Anyway, that was our look at owning an electric car. I really want to hear from you, so let me know down in the comments, would you buy this Polestar 2, a Tesla, or something else? I'll see you next time.